Good afternoon. I come to you as an evangelical, a white evangelical in the United States of America. And one of the tenets of evangelicalism is we believe conversion is possible. In Acts chapter 9, there was a man named Saul who was on a vendetta to tear families apart, to go after anyone who claimed the name of Jesus. He was set to, to murder and persecute and throw in jail and rip human beings' lives and families and communities apart. And on the road to Damascus, there was a light that shone, and he was brought to his knees, and he had a conversion moment that changed his life forever. We're here today because our nation needs a conversion moment, Amen. and our senators and congresspeople and politicians need a conversion moment. In Cincinnati, Ohio, about four weeks ago, a young man named Bernard Pastor was in a minor traffic accident a little bit north of the city. It was discovered that his family, which had applied for religious asylum, had been denied, and they were undocumented. He was quickly ushered to Butler County, Ohio, where they have a, a massive prison system built with taxpayer dollars funded by deportations, and he was on the fast track to be thrown out of this country. One thing they didn't count on was Bernard's friends. Bernard is from Reading, Ohio, the hometown of elected Speaker of the House John Boehner, a white working class community filled with friends who love Bernard Pastor. Bernard finished fifth in his class in June of this year. He was the star soccer player on his soccer team. And I'm not making this up. Before soccer games, he would lead the team in the national anthem before every soccer game. He serves as a youth minister and worship leader at the church that his father pastors. Right now, today, his three-week delay of deportation runs out. He has been in prison for four weeks. He spent Thanksgiving away from his mother and father and family. We need a conversion moment. Conversions are beginning to happen in the evangelical church. A good friend of mine named Dave Ferguson from Naperville, Illinois, who leads Community Christian Church, has heard about Bernard's story and has gone public for the DREAM Act. Greg Nettle, a pastor from Massillon, Ohio, Canton, Ohio, with a church of several thousand, has heard Bernard's story and said, that is wrong, this needs to stop and come out publicly for the DREAM Act. Chris Beard, a First Christian Assembly of God in Cincinnati, yes, Assemblies of God, has heard Bernard's story and said, this is wrong, and come out publicly for the DREAM Act. Pastor Dave Workman, who pastors Vineyard Community Church in Cincinnati, Ohio, a church of over 6,000, has heard Bernard's story and said, this is wrong, and come out for the DREAM Act. Conversions are happening. We need those conversions to hit the senators and the president here in Washington, D.C., so they can pass this common sense bill called the DREAM Act. We believe in conversions. Today, had the DREAM Act been passed six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, Bernard would be with his family in Reading after having completed his first successful semester as a college student, taking a deep breath after experiencing life as a student and pursuing his dreams. Instead, literally today, he is on the doorstep of deportation. I'm here today wearing, us evangelicals don't have quite all this regalia, so I have the University of Cincinnati star card, because this is where Bernard should be today, not awaiting deportation. to destroy families and destroy Christians nearly 2,000 years ago, later wrote these words in 1 Corinthians 13. In the end, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. He was converted from hate to love. We need our politicians today to be people of love and pass the dream out.